Hey gang, welcome back to another solids lesson. Today we've got a little old problem over here. We've got a little beam with some cables holding up a weight W, and it says that DA is rigid. Now what does rigid mean? It doesn't deflect, it doesn't bend. And here's DA right here, this, this bar. And it says if W, this weight here, causes point B, B is right there, to displace downwards 0 0.025 inches. How much is that? We call that 25 thousandths of an inch. How, how much is that? If you ah, pull one of your hairs out, right? A hair, a human hair is about seven thousandths of an inch. So that's about three and a half widths of a human hair, right? Just for reference. We're not talking about a giant displacement, right? We kind of get jaded when we talk about these values and we don't really understand the physical size of these things that we're finding. They're very small, right? So this thing is displaced three human hairs downwards, okay? What? Why would you even bother? Uh, that, you know, okay, come on. So find the strain in cable DE over there, doo -doo, and the strain in BC. Oh, here's C right here. I didn't put a C. I'm going to get a C on my test. Oh, no. And find the weight W that caused that thing to displace down 0.25 inches. Do you think we can do it? I think we can. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to draw that bar and I'm going to draw that bar displaced. Okay. All right. So here we go. Here's the bar here. Okay. So there is, what do we call that? D A or A D, whatever, right? Here's D, here's A. And then here is the new one. Okay. Now, is it really that far? No, it's not, but I'm greatly exaggerating this so, this can we, so we can see it. If I draw that the thickness of three human hairs, ain't nobody got time for that, right? All right, so they say that this point right here is displaced down. This was point B, and now this is the new point B. We'll call him B prime. This will be D prime over here, right? Okay, well, the, it says it's displaced down point zero uh, two five. Okay, which means that this point D over here, whoa, had to move down also, doesn't it? Okay, and you know what we could do? We could use our, our old friend similar triangle and figure this out, right? Now these are in inches. I'm going to put those in inches as well. I'm going to call this 36, okay, because it's 3 feet. And I'm going to call this 24 because it's 2 feet, which... I can do this, right? 36 is to 0 0.025. I'm gonna do it the other way around. 0 0.025. Oh, that was good. As this distance that I'm looking for, I'm gonna call it y, is to, oh, what's 36 plus 24? 60, right? Okay. So y is equal to, so this new distance over here is on 0 0.025 divided by 36 equals times 60 equals 0 0.0417, 0 0.0417, okay? So there's my displacement of, of a d. So what I'm telling you is if this point moves down, that this cable over here is going to have to stretch that much, isn't it? Okay. Now, um, let's talk angles real fast. Uh, you know, here's the deal. What is that angle over there? This is called, what I'm going to tell you right here is called the small angle assumption. Okay. The small angle assumption, because here's the deal. This bar is rigid. Okay. You might be saying to yourself, this is not right. Dr. Hanson. Look, it was originally 36, but when it starts to swing, what happens? Well, it actually is going to swing through an arc, isn't it? It's not going to just go straight down, is it? So that would make this over here 36, wouldn't it? Okay, and so I don't know who's 36. So either 
I have, I have one of two things here, okay? I have the dashed line there, which is, which is representing the swinging through an arc, right? So either this is 0 0.025 or that is 0 0.025 and this is a right angle. So which one do I use? Well, let me show you a little trick here. Let's call this angle theta, okay? Let's use the first one where we assumed it moved straight down, okay? Which we know that's not really what happens, but let's just try it. So what do you think? I would know, I know the adjacent side and I know the um, opposite side, right? Uh, let's see. And so I can use this, I can say tangent of theta is equal to the opposite over adjacent, 0 0.025 divided by 36, okay? And I can come up with a theta for that. So 0 0.025 divided by, oh, clear, 0 0.025 divided by 36 equals, and then I want to inverse tan that, right? Inverse tan is, okay, here we go. So theta is equal to, 0 0.0397887929. Okay, that's all the decimals that my calculator will give me. Um, well, what if I said the 36, instead of being up here, the 36 was the hypotenuse of that, right? Was the hypotenuse, okay? Well, then I know the opposite side, so that would be sine, right? So sine theta is 0 0.025 divided by... 36, okay, but now we got sine instead of tangent, so 0 0.025 divided by 36 equals, and then uh, inverse sine of that, it gives me this, theta equals 0 0.0397887338, okay, degrees degrees, okay? So using tangent and using sine, right? Now remember that deflection is only three human hairs down, okay? It's not very big. So which one is correct, the tangent or the sine? Well, does it matter? 039788, 039788, uh, seven, seven. Oh, that one's a nine, that one's a three. It doesn't make any difference until you get to the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight decimal places over. So the distance, the difference there is so infinitesimally small that it's okay, it's okay, what we do is we just assume it moves straight down. It certainly makes the math easier, doesn't it? But it's okay to just assume it going straight down. Even though we know it's moving in an arc, the arc is so small that it doesn't make any difference, right? You're eight decimal places away from a difference. That's the small angle assumption. And so that, for that reason, we assume that when something deflects, it does indeed deflect straight down because the angle, it just doesn't make any difference. So there you go, right? I, got, I spent a lot of time, I was like, no, this isn't correct. We need to do it the right way. And then when I got to checking out the wrong way, I was like, you know... It's so little that it just doesn't matter. So there's a lesson in a lesson. Now let's see if we can continue on and figure out this going on over here because I think we know some, everything we need to know with that distance right there. We didn't need that angle over there. Well, we might um, to solve this problem. So let me erase and let's keep going. All right, so back over on our problem. What do we know? Well, we know that this cable over here started out at three feet, which is 36 inches, right? And now, after this weight's on here, this cable is now 36.0417 inches long, okay? So what can we find from that? Well, I'll tell you what we can find from that. We can find the strain in that cable, can't we? Okay, and that's one of the things that they asked us to find the strain in cable DE. That's easy enough to do. The strain, or circle E, right, in cable DE is equal to the change in length 0 0.0417 inches divided by the original length, 36 inches. So the strain in cable E is 0 0.0417 divided by 36 equals, okay, point 
zero, zero, one, five, oh, one, one, sorry, there's two ones, five, eight, three inches per inch. That's the units on that, okay? So there is the strain in cable DE. That's one of the things they asked me to find. Okay? Okay. Now, next. Now that I know this, I think I can calculate how big W is using a little bit of statics. But I gotta do one more thing, right? I gotta do this. I've gotta use this equation here. We've talked about this equation, right? Young's modulus, or the modulus elasticity, is sigma, normal stress, divided by strain, okay? Now, they tell us here on this problem that the, uh, they give us the cross-sectional area of the, the wires that are holding this up, and they tell us that they're A36 steel. Any problem in solids, when they give you the material, they say it's A36 steel, or red bronze, or, or a, a, I don't know, stainless steel, or whatever. When they give you the material, you need to think, oh, I need to look probably a value up in the back of my book. Well, I've got my book here, okay? So what we got to do is we got to flip over to the very, very back of the book to the material tables, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look up E, okay? I call those look -em up values, okay? Are we in freedom units or are we in metric units? Uh, these are definitely freedom units, okay? So freedom units, let's look up uh, U.S. customary. Um, and let's look up, so here's the table, okay? So I'm looking up right here under materials, A36 steel, right there. And then I'm going to go over and read off modulus elasticity out of this column here, and it says it's 29 times 10 to the 3 KSI. Okay, so E, the modulus elasticity for A36 is 29, 1, 2, 3 times 10 to the 3, right? KSI, which is KIPS or kilopounds per inches squared, okay? Uh, oh, look here, we know what strain is, so if we move that to the other side, which is really a unitless thing because it's inches over inches, that cancels out. That's gonna give us, if we multiply this times that, it's gonna give us the stress in cable DE, okay? So here we go, so uh, 29,000, okay? times 0 0.0011583 is equal to strain, I mean stress in DE, okay? So let's see what that is. Times 29,000, that's 33.59. KSI. Well, what do we need that for? Oh, because of this. Sigma equals P over A, or sigma equals F, the force, over the area. The area is just given, isn't it? The area, right, is point zero zero two inches squared. So, and we know sigma, right? So that whole thing is equal to 33.59 kips over inches squared. So when I multiply that times the other side, the inches squared go away, and it's going to give me the force in that cable at the end in kips, isn't it? So F is equal to times 0 .002, 0 0.067 kips, or 67.2 pounds, okay? So that is the force in cable DE, okay? That much force caused that much stress, caused that much strain in cable DE. All of this is just for cable DE, right? Okay? So now that I know that, right, uh, I'm going to write that over here so I don't lose it, 67.2 pounds. Now I think I can find W here. So we got to do a little statics right quick, and it goes like this. Here's the beam. 
pin connection, A Y, A X, W, and then 67.2, right? So let's see. Uh, AX, well, AX is equal to zero, isn't it? And AY uh, is going to go, let's see. Oh, yeah, that way, doesn't it? Okay. So how about take a moment at A? Okay. So if I take a moment at A, I got W, which rotates me positive. W times how far away from point A? Three. Do you have to convert it to 36? No, as long as all of the distances are in the same unit, doesn't matter. And then minus 67.2 times how far away from A? 3 plus 2, 5. Okay, so W is equal to, okay, 67.2 times 5 equals divided by 3 equals, W is 112 pounds. Okay, that's another thing that we had to find out, didn't we? Right? Find W. Now we got to find the strain in BC. We got the strain in DE. I think we'll do it the same way we got W. We'll just go work backwards here. So we know the force that's acting on this cable. Can we find the stress acting on that cable? Yes, because stress is equal to P over A. P is 112 pounds divided by the A, 0 0.002 inches squared. So 112 divided by 0 0.002 equals 56,000 or 56 KSI, okay? We still remember E over there, because we're looking for strain, right? We're looking for strain. so. We can move strain to the other side and move E over there. So strain in cable BC is equal to stress 56 KSI divided by E 29,000 KSI. I got KSI over KSI. Remember strain's a unitless thing, isn't it? So 56 divided by 29,000 equals point zero zero one nine three one inches per inch. And that is the strain in cable BC. So there you go, there's our two strains. There's, there's our W, the weight that we had to find. And we learned about the small angle assumption, didn't we? All kinds of groovy new stuff in that problem. Okay, gang, I hope that helps. I'll see you here next time.